Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamonds trip young and intern time For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh -huh. they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the archive even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk .com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Uh, Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. I'm Emma Marie. I have Emma! Legend in two games. <laughs> 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 and Trip Young. What What's up? What's going on, guys? Just excited. Another great Thursday. One week closer to NFL kickoff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boxing news. We had, a, we had a, a, another legendary uh, football game over at Brooklyn Bridge Park. Absolutely. Uh, Ball for Peace. Shout out to H2O and uh, the NYPD. They came out and they put on the show. Um, so we're going to get into that a little bit later because we got the funniest man in the history of Ball for Peace with us tonight. Flyboy Chris in the building. And of course, H2O is going to be here because we got to recap uh, Ball for Peace. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, we got we got to say our goodbyes today just for a little while. You know what I'm saying? Hello. You know, uh, our, our intern that's turned into a production assistant, that turned into a blogger, that turned into a, a, a extra co-host on the show. Is uh, he got he got to go back to school? He got to get that degree. Guys, so uh, check out his blog. you know, He's young bull. Yep. Young bull. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna definitely bring Jalil out for a minute when we get to that uh, UFC fight because um, we gotta give him his his, uh, his his last run before he go back to that school and uh, finish them uh, them degrees up, man. He got, you know, young brothers is getting their education on, so you gotta support that. Absolutely, absolutely. So while we're on the topic of NFL and football, Jay Z is still getting backlash from his NFL and Rock Nation deal. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys feel like this is unfolding right now? Uh, I said last week, uh, I stand with Jay. I support everything Jay's got going on. I don't buy into the narrative that he's a sellout. Yeah. His track record proves otherwise. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of fake outrage. Yeah. You know, people just want to be mad about something. Yeah. You know, you got NFL players like Kenny Stills, um, like Eric Reed, who uh, are voicing their displeasure with, with the collab of Rock Nation and, and the NFL. But them guys are still cashing NFL checks. Yeah. Right? They still report in a minicamp. They yeah. still good employees all the way through it so mm -hmm. you can't knock jay for trying to bring change mm -hmm. when i thought that's what you wanted you yeah. want the change and i think just knowing his track record of doing so much for the community yeah. you have to have faith that he's going to turn this around and it's interesting that the players have anything to say because like you said they're still getting a check so technically they're hypocritical yeah if they want to you know be the ones criticizing him yeah well for, i mean first of all you know that's Brooklyn right there. You know, I'm always going to support Brooklyn. So that's, you know, so shout out to Jay anyway, because he, you know, he's always taking it to the next level. But um, yeah, as far as the, the, the players go, uh, Eric Reed and I know Kenny Stills has some stuff to, to say about it. Um, you know, first of all, I, I'd like to know, have you actually had a, a, any kind of dialogue with Jay-Z um, in regards to exactly what his plans are? Because nobody knows at this point just yet. You know, I'm sure he knows. But as far as the rest of us, we don't even know. That's number one. Number two, you know, like you said, with, um, you know, you guys are still cashing NFL checks. And I know one of the things that Eric Reed said, one of the statements he made was, oh, you made this deal, but Kaepernick doesn't have a job yet in the NFL. So my thing to that is... You getting a check from the NFL right yeah. now, and he doesn't have a job in the NFL. So why are you not uh, standing to the sidelines? You still, your, your paycheck, like you said, still says, you know, it has the NFL on it. Your owner's name is on that paycheck. So how are you going to come at Jay, who has been known for 20, at least 20 years, yeah. for the work that he's done in the community? You know, I, I told you guys earlier today when we had the, uh, the group chat, you know, uh, I, I wrote my senior thesis in uh, 2006, and I, you know, I was talking about all of the things that different rappers had been doing in the community from that point. So we're, we're talking about, you know, 
with 12, 12 years, you know, and yeah. since then. And now, I mean, you got, you know, obviously, you know about the water in, in Africa and, mm -hmm. and all of that. You know, there's a lot of things that you know that Jay Z does, but there's a lot of things that people don't know that Jay does and that goes, you know, that goes under the radar. Obviously, you know, we know. You know, the Reform Act. We know he helped Meek out of his situation. We know he helped 21 Savage. You know, because those are the big headlines. Yeah. But Jay-Z has been doing work in the community for a long time. You know, one, and, and two, who, who better to, to represent for us yeah, yeah. than Jay-Z who... You know, and not to take away anything from Kaepernick because I completely supported the kneeling. But at the end of the day, Kaepernick grew up in the, in the suburbs in Wisconsin. Jay-Z is from Marcy Projects. So who better to represent for us than someone who is actually from, from where we're from? I, I, to me, Eric Reed, I, I just don't understand um, yeah. his anger with everything. Because, I mean, we saw last year him run across the field to try to get the Malcolm Jenkins, who's part of the player coalition, yeah. um, who they themselves have been working behind the scenes to try to implement change. And he did the right for the game. Right. Crazy. And then and then to like the calls the scene before the game and then to speak out the way he's speaking on now, to me is like, all right, cool, you don't like Jay in this position, all right, but then what's your plan? Right. Yeah. What, what are you doing that we're not seeing or what are you bringing to the table that can initiate change? Because yeah. if you just outrage that anybody else who's trying to bring change, then you're not helping the situation. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are going off of headlines and not actually even looking up what the deal is. Exactly. And I spent some time reading it and basically the entertainment part of it He's going to pick um, entertainers that their music is, is going to be streamed during NFL um, episodes, I'm sorry, uh, commercials and mm -hmm. things like that. Then those entertainers have to pick out of five social um, issues and communities. So, and the proceeds will go to that. Yeah. So, and one of them being police brutality. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's if you actually read the deal, then you know it's actually yeah. very positive. And the Inspire to Change Act has something has been something that was already a part of the NFL. They're yeah. just kind of revamping it right. and actually getting someone from our community to actually have a voice in it and have a seat at the table. Right. And I think one of the, the first thing we saw right away shows where Jay's mindset is with this. He made Roger Goodell, Roger Goodell sit front and center yeah. and answer some tough questions yeah. that Roger Goodell has been kind of ducking and dodging in the past. Right. So Jay wants to implement change, but we've got to give him the opportunity to do it right. as well. We just can't yeah. criticize it. Because like they announced the deal it. and five minutes later, nah, you sell right. out. You, you know what I'm saying? You like, can't criticize. <laughs> just because you don't understand something doesn't mean you just start criticizing right. and, and like, nah, it, it ain't going to work. And one thing that has bothered me about this whole debate is I think oftentimes as a people, um, we can be easily divided. Yeah. And I feel like it went from us, everyone being on the same page about police brutality to now it's like your team cap or your team jay-z yeah. and i think that's the issue that bothers me because as a people we're always getting divided even back in yeah. our history and i think we have to kind of um shift our thinking and know that they both they both have the same goal mm -hmm. to evoke change or incite change so i think that's like the bigger picture picture that i noticed so yeah well, listen, you know, at, th at this point, we're going to sit back and, uh, you know, we're going to let Hove do what he does. Yeah. And because um, at the end of the day, you know, this is not like something where we're not going to actually know what's going on. Yeah. You we're know, see everything. exactly. We're going to see it unfold right. in front of our eyes. So mm -hmm. sit back, give Jay a chance. I mean, if anybody can 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 make that kind of an impact, it's definitely Jay-Z, yeah. you know, so. I'm, you know, again, we support him. Definitely. You know, and, I mean, shout out and shout out to Cap as, as well, yeah. you know. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got somebody that's stepping up. He, You know, you, you lit the torch, and now Jay took it and said, all right, this right. is what we're going to do. You know, because, you know, sometimes and people forget, you know, yeah, it, it change is, it, is great. But at the same time, you can't make change unless you're willing to sit down with people and try to come to some sort of, yeah. of, of a collective. And that's what Jay-Z is on. All right, you know, yeah, we seen what Cap did. And, and like he said, you know, yeah, but at, at some point we got to stop kneeling yeah. and we got to actually Imagine. really dig in and, and start making moves. Listen, well, you have to have a seat at the table to right. even be a part of the conversation. And that's the exactly. part that everyone is missing. But to have a seat at the table, you have to be able to compromise and discuss both, you know, point of view. So. Right. Yeah. That conversation, like you said, can only take place if you're at the table. And I just want to reference, we talked about Meek and Jay's relationship. In a recent Meek documentary, Michael, Michael Rubin, who's the owner of the Sixers, yeah. he openly talked about not understanding Meek's struggle until they became close friends. And he saw what he dealt yeah. with on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of these owners so don't come from the backgrounds we come from. It's a disconnect. Yep. Right? So There's a know. major disconnect. Yeah. So you've got to be able to be in front of their face and really show them what goes on if mm -hmm. you want them to change. Yeah. If you think kneeling is going to automatically force a billionaire to change his ways, it's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. I actually just this weekend I, I was speaking to um, a police officer that's NYPD mm. and I was telling
telling him why there's such a disconnect in our community with police. And I told him how, um, obviously, you guys know I live in Long Island. <laughs> um, you suburban dude. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my friends who um, grew up in the next town next to me, he became NYPD. But he grew up in a very predominantly white suburb. He's Dominican. Um, he ended up getting his first job in South Side Jamaica, Queens. Mm. Somewhere he's completely foreign to, knew nothing about the culture, already had preconceived notions of the people and of the atmosphere and everything. Mm -hmm. So he already went into that job with a slated view yeah. of all these. He, he looked at the people, all these animals, these projects. These are things that he said. Yeah. So you are the person now policing an environment that you people. know nothing about right. culturally. Yeah you're already going to have preconceived notions of people. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of part of that disconnect of even vetting police officers. Yeah. It's the same thing. And, I mean, and, and you know, so that's, at the end of the day, he's still a minority. So. And he's Dominican. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and he had a disconnect. Yeah. So imagine, you know, white men that are looking at young black men that live in a yeah. life that they're not even used right. to. I mean, Robert Kraft, I think he got it now. He got the Dream Tracer chain and whatnot. I think he's, like, kind of rocking with us, no, he's not. He's not with us, no more. Yeah. We cool with him. Are we cool with, you, with Robert Kraft? Oh, because he got the situation still. Nah, I always like Robert Kraft. I mean, he got the rubbing tug and he was working around yeah. with the DC chain. Yeah. Robert Kraft, good with me. All right, yeah. do we good? Do Listen, we good? it's a whole different culture in New England because you know we going Can we keep it on the NFL for a little right, bit? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, talk about it, right, You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We just saw Patrick Chung get caught up on a cocaine possession. No. Cocaine. Robert Kraft is getting rubbing tugs before playoff games. Yeah, I mean, they it's, they about no, I mean it's, it's a wild locker room. It's a wild yeah. locker room over there. That, those are the real cocaine cowboys in New England. It's, it's wild. It's wild over there. Yeah, I, I don't know. My, and Tom Brady's still playing at a high level at forty plus years old. That's what I'm saying. That, listen, that's why you know I'm kind of I'm kind of glad though. You know, I started my Madden franchise already because I don't know if he's going to be suspended or what. Patrick then I can't, he's done. He's done. Yeah, that's it. I mean, he's especially he's older now too. Yeah, that, that's he, <sighs> he's trying to come back off an injury that he sustained last year. Yeah. Uh, during that Super Bowl run. Um, you get it's indicted on cocaine possession. You're probably not playing at all ever again. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's probably that's probably going to be a wrap on. Listen, man. Uh, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what to say to that one. I'm, I'm disappointed in him, but you know, everybody got their vices, I guess. I I would say. Listen, Robert Kraft, he, he can come and hang out at the show anytime he want, man. Yeah, he can take us to all his spots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't <laughs> going to no <laughs> Robert Kraft knows his spots. Hold on, you ain't gonna hang out with Robert Kraft? No, I'm good. Ah, right, yeah, we in there. Uh, I mean, <laughs> just, I'm. He know how to party. You see, you see him with, with Cardi. He ain't gonna party. He bring out the Super Bowl rings. He bring out the Super Bowl rings. I mean, exactly. <laughs> Robert Kraft. So before we get off NFL, so Jerry Jones is still uh, speaking to Ezekiel Elliott, and mm -hmm. I mean, there's some talk about him, you know, potentially getting a higher, you know, payout. Yeah. So th there was a report that uh, broke today. They didn't give the exact figures, but they're saying it would put him as the second highest running back, mm -hmm. uh, paid running back. Um, right. yeah. And I think it's it's we've said it plenty of times. It's well deserved. He right. should get paid. He's he should definitely get it before Dak. <laughs> I mean, it, listen, Dak is really pushing the envelope, saying that, that forty million. million yeah. If that's, that's even crazy. true, yeah. but it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous number. But you know, Zeke is in a tough spot because he's still on the contract for two more years. Yeah, and we know the lifespan of a running back is very short. Yeah, but he 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 deserves to get paid. That team is a Super Bowl contender. When Zeke is on the field, yeah. when he's not on the field, they're barely a playoff contender. I think they're going to step up and give him what he wants because at the end of the day, like his his numbers and what he brings to the table is undeniable. And and they know the team is completely different when you know like you right. said when, when Zeke is on the field. We saw that you know they are nowhere near as good when Zeke is off the field. Yeah. You know so and and as much as I love Amari Cooper. He's not enough. Right. And just him no. and Dak Prescott is not enough. They need Ezekiel Elliott because he takes so much pressure off of Dak who, you know, I, I'm honestly, I think Dak is an average uh, quarterback. But the fact that you got the, you know, the, the golden goose right there with Ezekiel Elliott running the football, he takes so much pressure off of Dak, off of the receivers, pretty, off of everybody on the team, re realistically, just because he's that good. So yeah, I think if you're Jerry Jones, you'll be foolish. Uh, not to get this worked out. Yeah. yeah, you know this team is coming into the season with high expectations. They're coming off a good season last year. Right. Don't rock the boat now. Mm -hmm. Let's do what, it, what we got to do. Let's get these guys in, and let's get ready to have a good season. Because the division is still tough. We know yeah. how good Philly is, yeah. and we know how competitive those NFC East games are in general. So you don't want to get out to a slow start. You don't want to have the distractions that they had a couple years ago, where Zeke missed some time and they weren't able to make the playoffs. You want to come into the season with no distractions. Yeah. Yeah. So moving on to NF NBA, um, Lakers looking for a boogie repla boogie's replacement. What do you guys feel about that? <sighs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a rough one. But I think the, 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 the good thing about it is that 
I don't feel like Boogie was going to be the difference maker in them winning the championship or not anyway. I think it would have just been like, oh, Boogie's playing well. All right, he's healthy. It's a bonus. But I don't think he, he changes things for the Lakers either way. Uh, I know they're talking, to, I mean, they're talking about a bunch of injury-prone guys to replace them with. Yeah. Dwight Howard, Joe Kim Noah, uh, Nene. It's like, I don't, I don't even know. But, I mean, it's like you're kind of picking from the, the, the bottom of the barrel <laughs> with, the, with the guys right. that's left over. Honestly, you know, I know they do need another big man, but, I mean, at this point, I would just bring in Melo and just Yeah, I mean, right there. now, if you're a free agent at this point, there's a reason why you're still a free agent. Yeah. Um, Boogie, to me, wasn't the piece that was going to put him over the top. I think they were going to have trouble figuring out how to play Boogie um, with those guys because they need to be able to space the floor. And I don't yeah. think they have enough of those guys right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. I mean, I, listen, I, mean, I want to shout out New York. So he's, he's, he, I don't even know why they're yeah. even talking to Noah. Yeah, I, I, know what, <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't agree with. I mean, Dwight Howard, I don't see how that really fits. Yeah. Um, Mellow, maybe. But, I mean, I don't know where you, again, where would the minutes be? Um, yeah. Because Anthony Davis is adamant that he doesn't want to play the five. Right. Right, yeah. which, I mean, I, I just don't know how it would fit. Um, out of the guys they talked about, maybe Mo Space might be the best fit just because he can shoot the three a little bit. Yeah. But... I, I, they, there is no true fit for this team. That's what I'm they saying. They need floor spaces, and there there aren't any of those guys available. But it's funny that you bring up Melo because apparently Royce White thinks he's being blackballed. I don't really think that <laughs> blaming LeBron for that was the right comments to be made. Um, no, I don't think he was blaming LeBron. Well, he kind of, well, kind of, he didn't no, blame he did, him, he, he but he kind of tried to shut, put him on blast to he, say he, I, he doesn't. Oh, if that's you know, but basically that's your boy White's not on the roster, right? So here's a crazy thing, right? I said the same thing to Tripp last week, just in joking. Yeah, like, yeah. Because I said, honestly, right now, if the Lakers don't call and at least have a sit-down with Melo, mm -hmm. then LeBron was never your man. Like, yeah. like, like how is that your man? Y'all don't even get a sit-down. I will say this. Kendrick Perkins actually came out, and he, he said that LeBron was trying to get Cleveland to sign uh, Carmelo, and they wouldn't sign him. So... You know, all this, you know, every, when everybody feels like, like LeBron has all power to just do anything yeah. with the organization, you know, that might not necessarily be true. You know, so if he, if he did try to bring him in Cleveland and they, didn't, and they didn't want Melo there, you know what I'm saying, who's to say LeBron hasn't spoken to them already? Because we don't know either way. We not. No, he may have. You're right. I, I'm, I'm just, just saying as far as Royce, you know, Royce White right. come, you know, coming for LeBron. Yeah, True. I thought that was uncalled for, uncalled for because yeah. at the end of the day, you don't know what conversations are being behind being closed had doors. Behind yeah, closed doors, and he only has so much power. I mean, he's not an owner or a coach, and it's not team. LeBron five years ago. I just think time, that, too. I just think with the way the Lakers team is set up right now, right when they added Boogie, they really didn't need Boogie. Yeah, it, it was, was kind of like an additional piece. Like, let's see if, if he's fully healthy and he comes yeah. back, right. great. And if he's not, it's okay. Why wouldn't you at least get to sit down with Melo? Right. That's yeah. my only. Th that's my thinking on it. Now. I think Melo still has a lot of tough questions to answer because I, I don't really believe what he said during that Stephen A. interview. Yeah. I don't think he's willing to take a reduced role. Yeah, well, that was a great interview. He ain't got no choices at this point. He may not have no any choices, but I don't, I don't truly believe that that's what he wants. Yeah. I think he still wants to be able to get his shots time, with a good amount of minutes. Well, you got to play into that then. But, I mean, you got to get on the roster first. Right. Like, you got to get on the roster first. Really that. Yeah. And, and like yeah. I said, that he's got, to me, like that's going to be the ultimate decider for him. If he wants to play on a contender, he's got to be willing to say, I may only play 15 or 20 minutes tonight. If he yeah. could, if he could shoot uh, like H2O, he would be on the roster right now. Well, listen, we, uh, you're talking about, like, you know, different legendary status, though. Bro. That is that's like, true. Know, that is true. H is the only guy we know that, you know, he won't shoot for weeks. And then, and then, come and then in, he dropped yeah. 40. And again, and again. And a ball for peas, bro. Come yeah. on, that's different. That's different. Uh, my bad. I, I shouldn't anything, be. That's, yeah, anything, that's apples and oranges. Like, you're right. That's next level. Yeah, yeah, that's you know true. That's true. He, my he bad. I, didn't, I shouldn't even. I shouldn't even you know mention him in the same breath like that. He teaches the kids and he teaches. If it was Hoodie Mellow, you know then I could have said it, but not regular Mellow. Oh, my fault. I didn't mean to spread H two O like that. But my my comment. I apologize. Oh, you lucky he even. He might not want to come back no more. Man. After that, right? You know what? I, I apologize to the fans at home for that. I didn't. I didn't think about that before. I you know said it. So I do. I do apologize. But uh, another player that is back <laughs> to the community is Kawhi. He gave out over one million uh, backpacks to Southern uh, California students so that mm -hmm. was really notable of him shout out to him but again a show been doing that that for years yeah, right? you know what i'm saying now he new. now he go to la well, and I actually do it seen him do it and was like you know what that's what it was because I, mean, I you know I know the timing that. of it. Yeah, yeah. Look at the timing of it. it. No, now the Just ball for peace game come out. Yeah, now you want to yeah. give out backpacks, 
you know, and I and I noticed that a lot of times, you know, the stuff that Haran does in the community, people be watching that and they try to jack his moves, but they can't get it exactly right, like like H two O does it. Yeah, but imitation basketball yeah, exactly. games out here. We seen them, you know what I'm saying? Haran won't say it, but we'll say it. We seen. Yeah, that. we don't care about that. We we'll tell you in the heartbeat, yeah. Listen, y'all here jacking H two O style, and you ain't even paying homage to that man. You need to step your game up anyway, because with stuff that he doing, you can't even touch him with a ten foot pole. So it don't even matter. You know, we got your back. Exactly. That's how we. That's how we roll, though. Down. You know. So, but I tell you one thing: somebody that needed probably needed Haran to have his back was Daniel Cromier because he he got what this uh, this past uh, weekend really quick in the, in a stunner that uh, no nobody really really thought that uh, that was gonna happen like that. But um, I told you guys at the at the beginning of the show we got we got to bring our our intern, turn production assistant, turn blogger, turn extra co-host Jaleel out because he gonna he gonna break down the whole uh, Daniel Cromer fight really quick. This is gonna be his last episode before he has to go back to school. He's still gonna be blogging on the site, so y'all can still read all of his blogs every week and uh, his and watch his uh, his vlogs. But as far as being on the live show. This is gonna be his last live show until you know maybe uh maybe winter winter break. Winter recess. So yeah, so you just just pull up, just pull up, man. We man. we move we moving fast. Just grab just grab the, the 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 mic off the back there. Just come in, rock out with us on the set. We not even gonna change nothing up. Just come in, you know, stand. You can stand it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Now, could you come right here in, in between him and Eric so they can just see you real quick? Cause we got a lot going on. But just uh, tell us really quick what happened in the fight and 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 why Cromer got beat the way he did. Well, basically, when I looked at the fight, I mean, I thought Cormier came out good. I thought he looked good. I said, you know, this is about to be a quick night. You know, people get beat traffic. You know what I'm saying? You know how traffic <laughs> be. And then, you know, in the beginning, I gave him round one. He, he took him down on the floor. I thought, you know, it was about to be over because he's a big guy. So I thought it was yeah. about to be over. And in round two, I thought it was a close competitive fight, but I still gave Cormier that round. Then we get to round three, and that's when the tide started turning and, um, you know, um, Stipe started looking good He started going to the body That was the main difference Once oh. he started going to the body And killing him with them body shots he, It was all yeah. she wrote He yeah. had two body shots right. And you could see in, in, in Cromier's eyes yeah, He was guys That he was hurt by them two body shots And uh, right. and that was it <laughs> Now Lee, I want to ask you Because the body work was a big part of the fight right? But do you feel You talked about the second round being a little closer Do you feel because Cormier landed some clean shots In the stand up game yeah. It kind of created like a false sense of confidence yeah, because um, I feel like he was throwing the more effective punches. If you look at both, I think Stipe hurt him until he started going to the body. I thought um, Cormier had the, the more shots that, that really meant something, and that's why I gave him that round. So I thought he had confidence because he looked good. I mean, when you're looking good early, I mean, you, you have confidence. Like, oh, this cat not ready for me. Right. So, you know, he had that, that, um, the, that confidence. So when he got shots to the body... And it slowed him down. That's when Stipe really took advantage of it. So he found the outlet to really put this guy night night, and that's exactly what he did. Right. Can't get too happy too early. Yeah, that's how Protect it is. Protect yourself you know, at all you times. Accidentally in the Super Bowl, can't get happy too early. You know, yeah. it is what it is. You got to stay with it. And he got he got whooped. Well, listen, Jaleel, we definitely appreciate you. It's been a, a great summer. Yeah, it's been a great summer. Um, <laughs> we definitely appreciate you being here, and uh, we we wish you much success. And uh, you know, and getting that degree, man, we proud of you, brother. So appreciate it, appreciate it. All right, one more, two more semesters, one Close more up. year, one more Close year. Close out the show strong, bro. Exactly, exactly. That's what that's what it is. And yeah, um, catch me on um, Real Little TV. Yep. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and all that. And real fans will talk. Y'all already know. Oh, we out here really, really quick. We got one more thing that we're gonna bring out H2O and, uh, and and Chris in a second. But you know, when when the team does something, things that you know, we we always try to support. And uh, one of the crew members, uh, Kevin, the back, he just finished uh, a film, and uh, he's gonna play the trailer for you guys. He's gonna come out real quick, just tell y'all about it, and he's gonna play the trailer for you guys to check it out at home. You guys can watch the, you can highlight Kev to find out all the details where you can watch the the full film at. But uh, we definitely want to showcase and. And, and highlight that. So whenever you're ready, Kev, just just pu just pull up, and then we can uh, we can drop that trailer, and then we're gonna come back with a uh, H2O and a uh, Flyboy Chris. So let's not. Uh, we good in the back. We ready? Take these motherfuckers out of this money to throw this free ball in this big venue and give out prizes and trophies and awards. Ooh, ooh. Clap! This is a baker, a black pride, the creator of the Heritage Ball. Ballroom is a microcosm of society at large. Ballroom now is made up of all different types of people, gay, straight, 
white, black, every nationality, every age sector of the group. Hey, everybody, make some noise. Happy Black Pride. Now, we're going to do it one more time. I said, Happy Black Pride. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know the heritage ball. Tonight is your night to make a moment, to have a moment. Are y'all ready to do that today? <laughs> You ready for a moment? We got a girl from Canada. I have got a girl, girl which is so good. 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 It's a short one, right? Okay. Uh, sir. I got the mic. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Come sit, sir. Sit, sit. Hold it, sir. It's a turn in the sunshine. I have got a girl. I love it. Girl. 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 When I came to the ballroom scene, immediately I felt like I was a part of something. Just the warmth of that took me by surprise. I walked into a ball not knowing anybody, and all of a sudden I had an instant family. Family coming together and using these categories to represent themselves. You have your mother, you have your father, and those are the people that represent you with these houses when you go out and compete for your category. There's several different categories. You have your film queen, which is your transgender women who go out and, and vogue. You have your butch queens, which are the feminine boys. And you have your butch queen twisters, which you're still real and you still can vogue. Now they're opening up the category for women, cis women to, to vogue, which is amazing. I came to the ballroom scene in 1986, so it was before uh, we really ha began to have a wider public acknowledgement. Also, uh, surprise, surprise, I'm white. Uh, I was not your typical member of the ballroom community, but I came to the All right, welcome back, guys. And of course, we got Kev on set with us for a second. Just tell them tell at home um, about the film, your inspiration. And then just let them know where they can get get the watch the full copy at. Well, technically the full copy's not out yet. It's in film festivals. Um, I just got an award last week for this film. Um, it's called Work. Um, so basically, the inspiration about this piece was to tell you about how ballroom started. Um, people would think that it started from the gay people. No, it didn't. It started from the Harlem Renaissance, and it just bringing people together. So mm -hmm. I wanted to document uh, some stuff. If people have ever heard of the movie Paris is Burning that came out in the 90s, late 90s. I mean, like late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. talking about the ballroom life. So I have documented some people that are still living that was in that movie. So just wanted people to understand what um, ballroom is about, how it started, and, you know, something that is a passion to me. All right. Well, listen, man, we definitely, listen, congrats again Thank on you. completing the film. Because one thing, you know, we start a lot of things, but we don't necessarily finish them. So congrats on, on completion. And um, I guess, you know, once once it, once it is ready for the for the world to see after the film, film, film festival run is done, then you let us know and we'll let the world know. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate you, man. And of Job course. Congrats on your award. Thank you. Y'all see, y'all see who's on the who's on the set right now. Fresh, you didn't you didn't throw you didn't throw for five touchdowns this game. I was a little disappointed in that. Yeah, it was Zed, you on lock. You know what it was? I, I think it was because uh, Sean played this in this game. He was out there playing DB, shutting everything down. Yeah, with his <laughs> oh, I'll be with that. I'll be <laughs> with that. Sean played very well, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the game. You know? He played very well, um, but yeah, he didn't get the finish game. So, you know. I think the outcome would have been a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? It but, uh, you know, you, you, 
you um you know you want when you join with NYPD you want them to feel good you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying oh, so, oh, like you know okay. you, you know you want them to feel good we actually gave them Sean <laughs> as well too so Sean was actually oh, so, just playing oh, so out they had a real, that, that is true yeah you know so, versus the NYPD so, so we, we, we had to give them a little couple players and stuff like that to make yeah. it make it kind of even you know what I mean because you know I stack I always stack the that team that is true I know you cheat so yeah <laughs> It was it was cool though. It was cool. No, nah, but it, it was definitely a, a great uh, event. You know, everybody came out. Again. I mean, mm. we got we ran into a little bit of rain towards the end of the game, right. but yeah, I yeah, think yeah. at that point, you know, it was just an amazing event anyway. Everybody kind of ducked and dodged to get to keep from getting wet. Yeah. But it, it was just a, it was a great day. What made you go with the NYPD for for this one? Um, it's just it's something I've been wanting to do. You know what I'm saying? If 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 uh, you think about it, Bowling for Peace was. I created it because of all the senseless acts of violence that were going on in our community with police brutality yeah. and yeah. things of that nature. So um, it kind of came full circle with adding the police. So yeah. after the fifth year, you know, and uh, meeting uh, Mike Amante, the l- Lieutenant Mike, I had um, did a prior event with um, in, uh, in in Queens a little bit before that. They had like a, a, a little drive with my boy, my boy uh, Steve mm-hmm. from Iconic Sports. He had um, asked me to be a part of it, and I had my H2O basketball team play in the tournament. They had Felipe Lopez. He he was oh, there. Nice, he was coaching nice. as well too. Um, and I actually coached my H2O team against Mike. You know, um, okay. and he's an officer. So like, and he's like, "Yo, I've been watching you. I've been following you for years, and I, I, mm. I you know, I want to do something with you." So the next event that I had was. Um, was flag football so i'm always in creative mode so mm-hmm. like i was like all right let me see how i can implement them all right cool we're gonna do nypd versus balling for peace and that bridged the gap so now like pretty much everything that i do is gonna be with the with the police and yeah. um, with nypd oh. now from now on like even down to the uh pr- permit process was so much easier yeah because like, brooklyn I mean- bridge park is like one of the <laughs> hardest parks to get a corner in, like yep. you know, what I'm saying and to get so a little get cubby, all of that. Yeah. yeah. So like they go really hard, Bro, but the word cubby. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the comedian on set. <laughs> hey, your, your time's not now, comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're gonna get some stand up time in a second. <laughs> That's, um, amazing, because you know earlier we spoke about the NFL Rock Nation deal. And yeah, yeah. Disconnect with the community. Mm-hmm. So. Um, how how has the feedback been from what you did? Uh, it's been great, man. You, you see, uh, even when you get the police, you get News One involved as right. well too. Yeah. So it's easier to to get outlets as well to real, you know, not to say media, whatever. Just getting higher more media exposure, outlets, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the news. Like not, yeah. I haven't had the news at one of my events since the first year when I had News One. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So um, I get a lot of media coverage from like you know local media things mm. of that nature, but. To have, um, you know, I even with BET and BET and, uh, you know, uh, who else I had? I, I had a lot of different, you know, people yeah. coming. Even Fox and pa- Power mm-hmm. 105, Hot 97. Mm-hmm. But to have, like, a news outlet is a little different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was that was cool to have them out there and um, actually feature the story. Like, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? That same day, too. Yeah. So they did an amazing job. But that's what, when you, I feel like um, when you bridging that gap yeah. and having uh, the, I feel like I won almost, like you yeah, know what I mean, because yeah. you have this is this is the target that, at first, like yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying, like I wanted them to understand, like hey, we out here for peace. Yep, we ain't trying to be you know getting choked out and all yeah. this other stuff yeah. in our neighborhoods. Right. You know what I'm saying, like what yep. are we what are we doing? So and the conversation needs to be had, and this just puts more of a light on it. I wish you know, moving forward, these collaborations keep happening. Yeah. you know I feel like more media coverage is gonna mm-hmm. come, and not just gonna be here in New York, but we got some big, yeah, big on, ideas on, that we're going to be doing, so. yeah. I think oftentimes when uh, a lot of people, our people, have encounters with police, it's always negative. And it's a always fact. a frightful one. That's a fact. So to see them out there playing uh, mm-hmm. ball, playing mm-hmm. a game together and laughing and joking, having fun, that's a different relationship that we don't see. It, it, so it, it's dope. It's powerful. Too, because it's a lot of, a lot of people I know are on the force. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot yeah. of people that I grew up with, that I went to school with, you know what I mean? They're private yeah. cops like you know they're, pri- mm-hmm. they're cops actually, but I wouldn't even know one of the, the players uh, that from NYPD mm-hmm. actually went to school with me yeah so yeah, it was a like, couple with me as well too yeah. so it's like oh I don't know some of them they keep it on the low you know what I mean they keep their, their, their work life a lot of people do that you yeah, know what I'm saying especially like they just keep their work life on the low they don't you don't know, really be boasting and bragging yeah. about yeah. stuff like that but um I don't know like I, I guess in our community is like if, if I was a cop I'm gonna be let it known I'm a cop you know what I'm saying yeah. but um 
I guess more now they're going to be on it a little bit more. But in this climate, though, it's hard. I can imagine how they feel. You probably feel like everyone thinks that you're doing something wrong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I I can imagine being a police officer right now, you may not be as prideful about it Uh because of the way social media depicts them. But but that's what I hope to eliminate. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Making us on both sides. On both sides. Us be all at one. Like, even with me, I want to go to more community events, maybe even create the community uh like sit down and stuff like that where yeah. we are actually able to talk to the police and voice our opinions you know what i'm saying yeah. and, and, and frustrations and, and frustrations yeah. and then who better than to do it than somebody like me who's been pushing this so more exactly. people be like For more years. acceptable to go into these meetings other than like you know a, a lot of people who do them are are people who are older you know what i'm saying yeah. not like part of the community and not a part like yeah. they're still in the community but they're not but really moving in the community yeah yeah you know what i'm saying so like somebody who's moving the community somebody who's still doing things in the community who wants better for the community like you know and, and not worrying about a crack in the curb like you know what i'm saying like some, the, i'm sorry i didn't mean yeah. to cut you off there now one of the things i saw that was that was really great was how everyone got together midfield before the yeah. game mm-hmm. yeah. to share the same message and sentiment mm-hmm. as to why we're here that's a fact so it, it was it wasn't just about yo let's just come out and get some exercise and play football no. like we're here for a mission yeah and how do you think that's going to help moving forward with that relationship with the nypd and being more involved <laughs> that's going to help big time you know what i mean and we we have a documented we have videos yeah. we have films we have and and it's all about even coming together even the warm-up before that like you know what i'm saying um shout out to reggie a uh, former professional football player who who did who who conducted the youth clinic and also warmed us up as a team as yeah. a group. You know what I mean? I feel like those things are really big. Like, and I even brought it back. I did tug of war. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? When the last Which time was, you seen tug of war, that was that dope, was probably you know the highlight of the day. I was yeah, like, man. <laughs> we won that at least. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> <laughs> but, it was two um, one. It was two one. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so it's um you know I feel like implementing certain things like when i do events i don't just do them to do them i I think about them i strategically put things in place and that's something that you know people will realize it's not a clout chase it's not something that you know i don't have no thought about like you know what i'm saying and every time you come to an event you see something a little bit different Mm -hmm. see something a little bit better and if it's not that, then what am I doing it for? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I'm not getting closer to, exactly. to to goals that I'm... And I have so many more goals that I want to reach yeah. with this stuff that, um, you know, that I that I want to do. So, you know, it's, it's, it's great. You yeah. know what I mean? I feel in a good space with this right now. Shout so. out to, to uh, Lieutenant uh, Mike and, and everybody from NYPD that came out. Lieutenant Mike, he's actually going to join us. Um, Work? Yeah. He's going to sit down up. with Shout us. Shout out to Mike. And uh, go back and forth. We got we got some things we got to speak about, That's a fact, you know, man. like so. Put him on the hot seat. Exactly, man. Mm-hmm. he's gonna be on the hot seat with us, definitely. So big shout out to him and, and everyone that came out. Um, Chris, you keep the chains moving at every ball of a peace event. I mean, you done roasted some people too. Which, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's part of the game. I mean, you gotta keep it going. You know what I'm saying? I mean. I think it's a dope event. I love it. Every time H calls me up, he's like, yo, I need you to host it. You know what I'm saying? And without a doubt, I'm there for it. And the fact that he went higher than where he was last year of, like he said, being with the NYPD. Because normally it would be mm-hmm. like celebrities versus Team mm-hmm. H. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this actually showed a lot. And especially the time that we're in right now, it shows a lot of where he's at and where his mind is set to say, you know what, it's balling for peace. So what we're trying to do is really make peace. So to have the NYPD to be with us, to play with us, that showed a lot coming from him. Him, so you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So when I when I he told me that because I was like, "Yo, I want to play." He was like, "Well, we play in the NYPD." I said, "Never mind, I'll sit down." Um, <laughs> you know, so I said, "I'd rather just have jokes." You know what I'm yeah. saying? And have fun because you know I might tackle and that might I might get arrested. But anyway, <laughs> you were like, "That's an assault." Um, assault no, nah, that's an assault, sir. Like, no, a uh, couple of cats looked like they was ready for like yeah. a real tackle. Nah, they, 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 they was themselves. really tackling out there, and I oh, was like, a couple cats yeah. like they was wrapping up. Yeah, yeah. Because we had went to two hand touch because of the um. The belts that we had, like, um, you know, kind of had to s- switch them off when we substituted yeah, in yeah. and out. So it was like, um, we just gonna do two hand touch to finish the game. But um, overall, it was it was dope, man. Can- I mean, like I said, to just see the H two O every time just go higher and higher with it, and yeah. we had a serious conversation afterwards, mm-hmm. and we were saying that we don't even want to call it a celebrity game anymore. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's not even about that no more. You know, yeah. we want to do it for the right reason. And even so, myself, 
the fact that it's called Bowling for Peace and he wants to go higher with it because even with me, I'm also part of um, Guns Down, Life Up, and with Erica Ford, I love my life. Mm -hmm. So it's a couple of things that have been going on. So to have Bowling for Peace and just being a part of the NYPD because right now everybody's looking at the NYPD like on a negative vibe. But like the officers were saying, it was so dope. Like you were saying earlier and you were saying earlier, Everybody came in the middle. Mm -hmm. And yeah. even yeah. it was said that there are things on social media, on TV showing, yeah, there are crooked cops. Yeah, there are some bad cops. But yeah. this showed the real acts of kindness. And it was dope to see that type of vibe. And the officers were just there helping out, enjoying it. And they had a good time. Yep. And that was really dope. And we're going to we're gonna actually, um, we're going to play the, the footage next week, actually. We're still um, cutting everything up. And but being I, lazy. Yeah. That's what's going well, on. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Hollywood Listen, now. He got a whole that. bunch of things him, other him. than bowling for peace I'm, now. I get it, man. That, I get that, out that, 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 He's that. too popping for me. Nah. You know, you I couldn't know. even get him out this weekend. We like. I'm saying, well, I should have came because you was with Cardi. I should have just pulled up on you. But, uh, but we definitely will. That's the homie, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the homie. Shout out, I got to shout out uh, Mark, uh, the, our cameraman Mark, because he comes out and he's a true lifesaver and, and will run that camera. So I definitely got to salute you for that, brother. Yeah. And he, you remember he was there early. The open yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. He even had the basketball game. Yeah, we did a lot football. of stuff. I forgot about that. Open yeah, run. so Mark, Mark yeah. definitely been holding us down. So definitely salute to you, man, for that. Um, and Shout and, out to Mark, man. Yeah. Shout out to Cliff, too, man. You, Cliff, Shout out to Cliff. Cliff. Can, can, can I ask you why you're the only one yeah. that wears a headband during the game and nobody else gets one, sir? Because he's too cool for school. <laughs> I understand that. He don't even wear a headband. Nobody has a headband. I'm trying to brand something different. It's a so special... Uh, you always got something <laughs> coming out. I was like, can I get a headband? He was like, no. <laughs> no. You cannot I, have one, I sir. Yours. I ain't going to tell you how uh, Haran was supposed to bring the jersey here because you see we got the, the Hoops and the Sun shirt in the back. We've been trying to oh, replace the, the Yankee jersey. He's supposed to been bring us a jersey from Born for Peach. You ain't do that yet. Well, well I, speaking my, of that, you right, well, on the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, with the with the jersey. And we still made it happen. So yeah, shout out to Wooter. Yeah, that was shout dope. Shout out to Wooter Apparel for um That was dope. Yo, FedEx man, y'all I don't know. <laughs> If you work for FedEx Smart and everything, it definitely wasn't a special yeah, delivery. Yeah, yeah. FedEx, <laughs> I love you guys. Special this delivery. Yeah, 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 special delivery at all. Yeah. <laughs> FedEx, yeah, let's I, get it. I love you no. guys, but yo, we got to, some things, we're going to tell you, some things we need <laughs> to talk about, about, right? We got to speak about. I don't know yeah. how he came about it, because the, the outfits he had all together to go with the gloves, the jerseys, it was going to oh, be man. dope, but he, yeah, I, so I came we, back, I was like, why does everybody look like Zebra Prince? What's happening? This is not happening. What? What's going on? It looked like, what's that movie? Life with Eddie Murphy, you know? Yeah. Oh, I was just like, yo, everybody is playing the cops. Prison ball with cops. It's like, that's not a good look. We had prison ball going on. We still had uniforms. The NYPD was really there. Yeah, it really looked like prison. The gray shoulders and the white shoulders. Yeah, right? Oh, it was like, what's going on? But. Yeah, but, but even it, with the curveball being thrown, yo, you still handled it. Still made it yo, imagine what I was thinking about, like the, all the way up, and then the uniform <laughs> get there at like three thirty. The uniform, yeah. you want to know even worse? I couldn't even host. I was upset. Like there was a DJ equipment problem. The thing blew I was out. Like. Still I was like, guess what? I don't think I'm yeah. able to host. I had to just yell with my own voice. Like, <laughs> all right, uh, that's what has to happen. It was like, where's your mic? I was like, well, and, and, but and, and we still used to it though. You know, yeah. you're used to curve ball. Things you know happening. So. I'm used to rain, and it says 87. <laughs> because that's your name. H2O, <laughs> H2O. water, duh. I can't. 87. H2O. H2O. He brings the water. A tropical storm. Once you can. And then it just it just <laughs> it happened last year. Yeah, at the very end. At yeah. the very end, H2O. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta change his name. But listen, <laughs> sometimes that happens. We've had um, red carpets where we've, like, something, the mic died, forgot something. We yeah. always had to use yeah, a cell phone. Yeah. So it's that's crazy. when greatness is happening when you get a little hiccup. So. I mean, doing these events, like, you know, it, it, nothing, like, Go gets smooth. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, nothing gets to me At anymore. This point, right? At this so point, many moving even, parts, even though. the first year of Bowling for Peace, they had, like, a snowstorm. The night yeah. before, mm. that yep. was insane. Right. Like you know what I'm saying. At the uh, second year, Baruch. I remember that. At Baruch. Yeah. Baruch. Yeah. At Baruch. The I second year, it was, was at York. It had another snowstorm on the day of Bowling mm -hmm. for Peace. Uh, Bowling for Peace. And and it literally, I had to push it back yeah. two weeks. Then wow. the third Bowling for Peace, I had the uh, I was going to be doing that St. John's. Yeah. Then that didn't happen. Yeah. I had to bring it back to Elm Court, and yep. then it 
whore the yeah. entire day and people still and I don't know what's a man over here yeah. I don't know I didn't change your name yeah. and maybe I don't know it rains a lot but that's why I even appreciate everybody who comes out you know, yeah, but that's the dope part about it. Everybody still, still pulls up, you know. Because yeah. I mean, still show love. Still love to the time. cause. Like you move by passion, so people feel that, you know. So that's people a fact. Come out. That's yeah. definitely a fact. And Chris, uh, outside of Born for Peace, you've been doing your acting thing. Yes, definitely. As of late, you just you, you did you did you did a movie. Yes, I did. Pray before you eat part two, and we just did part three. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. actually dope. We supposed to be doing that. Um, actually, in the fall, we're dropping and having a red carpet for that. So that's definitely gonna be dope. Okay. And um. Um, supposed to be doing another one coming up uh, with uh, Pop. Pop hit me up. Um, what's the show that they're doing now? Um, he gonna kill me because he <laughs> definitely hit me. But um, it's coming out. I'll post it on my Instagram. But okay. um, definitely have another movie I'm working on. Um, I'm actually gonna be doing a comedy show with Walt from um, Black Ink. Black he Ink. just okay. hit me as well. So we're gonna be doing some. And there's a lot of other things that are about to come about. So and I'm just working on all my skits. I actually just finished talking to uh, Commodore actually, because mm -hmm. um, I actually gave him props where I felt like props is due, and to see him from where I saw him hitting the stage where I was hitting the stage. And to see him where he's at now, I had him today like, yo, bro, congratulations on everything. Because I just feel like a lot of times, nine times out of ten, a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I know him. But I gave him the real congratulations. Like, bro, you know what? Congratulations on your success. I see it. The fact that I saw him on 50's page, I was like, yo, yeah, that was yeah. huge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he's been grinding for a while. And I was just talking. I'm like, you know, I want to see him go far. There's a lot of... People that are on social media that I see that are making it very fast, which is great. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And they get on like big TV shows such as Wild and Out, which is wonderful. But I was saying that about him. I want to see him on that platform as well. But God has a reason for everything. And I yeah. see why, where he's going to be at. And it's going to be dope. You know, and I just had to congratulate him. Like, yo, much to set, much and, success. And we, we, we need more of that because, you know, as a culture... You know, everybody's designed to nah. I gotta be the number one, right? And if I show you too much love, I look weak, so right. I can't, I can't right. do that. A crab in a barrel effect, only yeah. in our culture, only yeah. in what yeah. we're doing. Like some people. Other than me, mm -hmm. like, yo, how can I help you? They want to just jack your whole movie. Exactly. Right. Other, yeah. You know what I'm saying? How can we come together to make this thing even bigger as, as opposed yeah. to... And the comedy yeah, game is just watch different, you and too. I'm going to just watch it. what you do, your every move, and literally <laughs> yeah. just try to yeah. jack yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Right? So you know what I'm saying? We just... Um, uh, sat down with Michael Blackson and we were just speaking. Oh, I opened up for him. Yeah, definitely. We yeah, were yeah. speaking about comedy. Sometimes there's always one leading person mm -hmm. at a time, mm -hmm. and it kind of creates an atmosphere of not feeling like there can be multiple on top. Right. So yeah. it's That's like women. In, I, mean, in hip -hop. I mean, I, I mean, I feel, I'm a journalist, and oh, yeah. I feel that sometimes you know on the carpet, other women, it, it's like a competition. And I mean, it's not. Women, I, w I wouldn't <laughs> say it's competition. I mean, it's all about your style of how you do your craft. Yeah. You know, somebody's always going to be a little bit more over you than the next person I mean it's all about how you bring it yeah. I've had comedy shows where certain people were like yo I'm hilarious and they were supposed to end the show but me I'm not too my own horn I've come there and just killed it yeah. and I wasn't even the last person up but they was like you were the first person up and you killed it more than the last person yeah. Yeah. and it just be like that it's all how you bring it and like you can I tell like more him, than you know? one, more than one comedian. It's like yeah. you can't, I can't, I can like Kevin Hart and still like Martin or still Absolutely. like Mike Epps, or something, you know. Yeah. But I think when you focus on your lane, being in your lane, and right. what you do the best, right? You don't. I don't look at other girls around me that you know what they're doing. I just focus on being the best me. So that's, that's all you should do, as you should. My my mm -hmm. thing is my saying. I always say, stay in your lane until it opens up. Like you know, what mm -hmm. I'm saying, you stay in your lane. I don't. I literally, I don't watch that much TV. I yeah. don't be knowing what. I don't really look at other people's Instagram posts unless I'm like, once I post something and I like scroll yeah, down, if you're right. not in there, then it's nine times out of ten, I didn't see it. Until next right. time, you go back on the like, ground. Next time on there, like, or just, I text people. I hit them up. If I want somebody to come to my event, I really just, I hit them. I call yeah, them. Personally I personally text them. People be like, yo, you ain't come out, you ain't see it on the ground. No, Instagram shows like 3% of <laughs> yeah. what you have. Like, pretty much. Know how many people? Like, you know, yeah. It's like, like <laughs> people really get mad from that. Like, yeah. We've lost touch of that, though, unfortunately, as a culture. It's true. Like, I don't watch all of your stories every yeah. day, so 
you have to call me, check on me. Because yeah, <laughs> you, you got to think, know? if you have, even if even if unless you you got a thousand followers, mm -hmm. you know how much stuff is is scrolling up your timeline. Right. You can't, you know what I'm saying. So you got to call and 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 have that personal relationship with people. It makes you sense. Got, you got to tell me no. You gotta yeah. be like, nah, I can't make it, bro. Yeah, like, you know, I didn't right. hear you say that. You go, I hit them. Yo, all right, cool. We like, on the phone? You really? So we right, right. can't make it. All right, bet. Like, we don't like, even do that no more. We don't even call on the phone. It's more like it's such texting and everything. Like we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I well, yeah, because now, because now at this point, you know, you really you don't have to because people are fighting you to get into the the games. Yeah. Right, and right, so right. Now you don't you don't you know came to that level where it's like you don't have to do anything pretty much. And even with the games, like I, I like I try to always give newer players like a, a chance to, a yeah. chance to play and new new people and, and mm -hmm. before people get to know them like you know what i'm saying like the list of people who were not that known yeah. before yeah. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like, like yeah wavy this year wavy yeah wavy yeah so say even like a jacque jacque came yeah. and performed at the, 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 the fact. second ball of that's the a fact. right I, and at your college and also performed at the football game like you know what I'm saying and on star like, and you know at, uh, at the, at the yeah. concert at, the, at Black Thorn and at the concert right. at Black Thorn so like did, these yeah. people always come out and like you know what I'm saying Low Deluxe and different things but like mm -hmm. and some of these people aren't known for their, their peace work like you know what I'm yeah. saying but like you know I always feel like I want to give people a shot a platform, a yeah. platform to, to, to provide Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. What they do. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Talk, <laughs> no, 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 no. Talk about one of the recent times you were on, though, how a lot of a lot of cats coming off of the ball and for yeah, these, like, and they, they blow take up. off, yeah. And they blow up. I, only if, the, you know, they just show the love again yeah. when they, when they, back, right? when they on. Like, I mean, there's no reason at Hollywood. Hard. I mean, sometimes you got to show where the love is at. Like, who started you first? Like, I'm going to be honest. H2O didn't even know who I was when I first started Bowling for Peace. Like, I got Don thrown... DeMarco... He threw me into yeah. Bowling for Peace. And Chris was like, yo, why you like, well, my man Chris want to do something? I'm like... Uh, He's like, who is this cat? Like, yeah. All right, cool. Dude. I can <laughs> see this guy throwing the, the fan <laughs> stuff in the crowd. Yeah. And, and making the jokes and... and I'm like, oh, all right, this guy's cool. Like, yeah, he's yep. like, yeah, it's cool I, guy. I, I want to come back for another one. And it just happened. I got thrown into Bowling for Peace. So, you know, so the peace was made. So it was really dope. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm really grateful that H2O hits me up every time to do Bowling for Peace. I want to play next year. You know what I'm saying? Like, actually, I want to play. Cardio up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know. Next year, I took it over and I host. Oh. Uh, uh, I thought she was playing uh, next year in the basketball game. Oh, oh the basketball I'm playing next year. Oh, yeah. Playing? Oh. No, oh. I was watching this year and I was just like, man, I told Tripp. I'm like, yeah. I should be out there playing. So, uh, next year, I'm going to play ball. Yeah, but I we think got to have somebody from the, from, from the crew definitely at each event playing in the game from now on. I think it'd be dope if. I got the bowling on. I think it'd be dope if we I think it'd be dope if we both host. It'd be like a commentating thing. That, that yeah, would actually be really dope. We the dynamic duo. We'll talk. We'll talk. We can talk about it. Yeah. Let me get my manager. Hello? No. Right. <laughs> Let me call my PR agent real quick. There you go. Set it up. Set it up. Call me, bro, I know you. <laughs> yes. Call my people. Set it up. Call my people. Call my people. Like, people get a little yeah. bit. Listen. Yo, okay. I, I can no, tell you, it gets crazy. I got some friends yeah. that their following is going up, and they're and like, they, "Oh, since you got hit." So like, yo, what? I don't like that. Like, Ooh, I knew you before. Like, when you had five people, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, come on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's who crazy. it is. So, but there was, there was a, a artist that I wanted to come onto the show, <laughs> and I met them at, um, at Bowling for Peace and, and whatnot, and they We're was here. gonna. Oh man! Oh. Yo. Yo, you said you want to have this convo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I you said you want to have this convo. Yeah, on I think it? I think maybe like two years ago. So bowling for these three. <laughs> yeah, I believe I believe I think you that was basketball it. Basketball or football? And I think it was basketball. Oh, was it bowling? I know. <laughs> it, was, it was basketball, and Go they were supposed to. They were gonna come on the show. They was like, yeah, we know we was gonna work it out, and we wound up. It didn't happen right then and there. So when I had hit them back to be like, all right, like now it makes sense to have you come back onto the show. They were like, oh, um, all right, but you got to hit up my manager and blah, blah, blah. Oh, man. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you ain't coming on the show. Yo, you, you know, that happened when somebody reached out to play in it. Like, all, I see the craziest thing. People reach out to play in a game. Yeah. And they'd be like, yo. Um, it and up. it's like, um, all right, cool. If you want, like, all right, whatever. Let's see how we can make it happen. And then they're like, yo, just hit my manager, though. Like, wait, you're asking. Right. Yeah. Like, what, yeah. so what, what do you... 
you. I'm yeah. not asking you. That makes me exactly. That makes no sense. And then like, like yo, it, 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 you know, yeah, some people should just be cost this. Like yo, try. Uh, yeah, like, that's that. Nah. I, I wanna I'm gonna so so be honestly real. Yeah. To make it seem like and, you and need me to come out. And don't get me wrong, right? Because I have a PR agent, and there's and I'm overwhelmed sometimes. No, I'm not. I'm not even trying to be like that. No, so she get in the middle. No, oh my god. But in order for M to host next, you gonna have to hit up a people. But I'm just saying. So sometimes there's a lot of moving parts, and it's different. If you know you're hitting her directly, like I'm a yo, he's just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Like, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna hit your man. Just cut. Yeah. No, yeah. it's, it's All right, different. All right, if it's, if it's, if it's someone that doesn't <laughs> know you and they're inquiring, then that's a little different. But it's obviously it's like if it's. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that was just they, like, you, you I'm just saying. Get I get it, I get it. It is necessary sometimes. It is, it is. Upon, definitely is. Because sometimes sure I forget about a, tons of stuff. Like, you probably, do you I'm have bad. an assistant at all? Uh, and I'm sure you need one. Yeah. Because of all the things. He's I talked about it many yeah. times. I wouldn't look but, at you crazy if you say, yo, just talk to my assistant to work out. Because you have so many things going on. Just, yeah. it's, it's the truth. But sometimes the best way to do it is do it yourself. Of like, real talk. Like I've been in stuff that I've give people the reins to do things and then they get they just messed up like or they just yeah. like, they're like okay yeah. i feel like i should be doing more because i'm helping you and mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. a lot of that stuff happens I've seen, and they can't having be in a that team to can help and yeah i mean h tools come i mean i'll be honest this man right here has done a lot like i've seen him have people to actually assist him and wanted to be a certain way and they just go left with it you know what i'm saying i've seen him ask certain people yo could you do this could you do that yeah. assist me with this and assist yeah. me with that and it just goes left okay. once people get into the I, I, honestly what i think people it's like a kid in a candy store right so they they see what's going on yeah. and they're like oh wow you have all these people here oh i can work with this person now like i want to yeah. get on that person because they do right. but they're not really doing nothing like yeah, exactly. right. you're working with the person who got all of them here yeah, right you don't even like, think, think about yeah, it. Like, at all at they all they all came not for you yeah but they all because either i hit them up or a friend of the like, yeah right so it's like yeah. no, like it's I you gotta it. think a little bit. Like, yeah, they want the hype and they not want the, the hype work and not the, the work. Like, yeah, yeah. We've, seen, we've seen that. And that's what it is <laughs> about right now. Everybody's chasing the clout, and it's not even about that. You know what I'm saying? And like you, and like y'all was saying earlier, you gotta humble yourself because it's just a lot of people that I've seen their careers skyrocket, and now it's like. What's going on with them? Why are they not as hot as they used to be? I'm not going to say no names at all. Yeah. But I've seen okay. certain people, and oh, yeah. I, I still rock with no, them. That's and I'm going to be honest. I still rock with them, and I'm just like, yeah. now they're trying to make that comeback and wow. yeah. humble themselves with it. And it's like, I think it's a little too late. Because when you're at the peak of your career, you should just be humble. There's no reason to be... You know, oh, I need this, I need that. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. I know some another some artist. Some people you see on the way up, you're going to see yeah, on the way I see, down. Yeah, I see down. artists come to us. Like, I work in the clubs. And there was an artist. Like I said, I ain't going to say no names. There was an artist. And she came out and she was like, yo, all I want is $500 and two bottles. She got hot. Next thing you know, she was like, oh, I want $2,000, $2,000, two, two to three bottles, and I want all my people in for free. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, when, when, what? when you were I was yeah. like, first of all, the club was even this small. It was like yeah. small like this, but you want all that? Like, come on. When, when people get on, too, they, they forget about the whole, the logic of why they were doing things and all that yeah. other stuff in the first yeah. place. So it's like, yo, like, and then when you use a name, say if you use a name, if I let all of your people, who are you really bringing? What, yeah. how does that I don't make know them. sense? It doesn't make sense. Don't Listen, they, the guys, they put, they putting the lights on us really quick. Cliff is putting the lights on. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, Cliff. H, just, just to give them really quick the info for Born for Peace and then Chris, one more time, just give them all your info as well. Gotcha. You can hit up the uh, Born for Peace page um, at B-A-L-L-I-N, the number four, the word peace, my page, H205, and hit up BallingForPeace.org. And Chris? All right, you can find me on Instagram at F L Y B O I R K R I S, and that's for everything right there. And you'll see everything that I'm doing, everything coming up. Um, I'm on all social medias. Just find me on that uh, ChristianMingle.com. Uh, hey, yeah, you know so. What I'm <laughs> yeah. Single. single ladies jump in his DM. Yeah, <laughs> I might just go for her. Oh, hey, hey, hey I'm just saying. I'm She's taking. Hey, hey everyone, take it, <laughs> over. Just take it over. Close it out. <laughs> Shoot your <laughs> shot. No. Bless right, you. Know, I'm gonna close it out you for you. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> for myself, Trip Young, Emma Marie, Legend in Two Games, H2O, of course, yeah. Flyboy Chris. Appreciate it, man. Most we'll definitely. We'll see you guys next week. We up yeah. out of here. I don't know where I'm looking. Be out there. Right there. Yeah. <laughs>
Diamonds trick young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh, I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell a Bobby Sitch. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out, but real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk.